Julia, this was the first decline in annual underlying earnings since it listed about nine years ago. How will the market judge JB Hi-Fi today? I think we've seen a result today in line with expectations, so we shouldn't see a huge share price uh, reaction from JB Hi-Fi. We may see the stock up a little bit because what we have seen from this result is that it does remain uh, a low operating cost uh, model in a quite a difficult environment. So its business model is quite resilience, resilient. And if we have a look at JB Hi-Fi's share price, we know that it's down by 42% over the last year. If we have a look at expectations, we were expecting to see $104 million. We've actually seen it come in at $104.6 million, so a little bit ahead of expectations. They have seen record sales of $3.13 billion, but that of course has mainly been driven by the, the aggressive store rollout that JB Hi-Fi is in the process of doing. In fact, if we have a look at JB Hi-Fi uh, branded stores, we actually saw sales up by 7%, but if you have a look at, on it compared basis then comparable sales is actually down by 1% and that really signals that JB Hi-Fi is growing through its aggressive store rollout. We know it's been a difficult time and the margins reflect that we've seen a lot of its competitors closing stock and getting rid of inventory and that's reflected in the margins which have been squeezed but in a very difficult retail environment we are seeing a very low operating cost uh, model which is quite resilient we have seen margins coming under pressure because of its competitors uh, closing down stores but altogether the result pretty much in line with expectations and that aggressive store rollout is going to continue for a couple of years and really underpin the growth in this business by property trust julia the stock is up already about 2.6 uh, percent what's caught your eye well, the result, the half-year result, has come uh, and actually beat our expectations. And not only that, we've seen an increase in the full-year guidance. So a double positive coming through for GPT. We have a look at our expectations. We're expecting to see $211 million. And we've actually seen the profit come in at $275 million. And uh, the full-year guidance uh, at, at more than 7%. Now, GPT's own guidance has been for CPI inflation plus around about 1%. So it's managed to uh, beat that very, very comfortably. So um, no doubt it's going to be a good day for GPT shares. If we have a look at its underlying business, well, we know that this is Australia, one of Australia's oldest and largest uh, retail investment trusts. And it does have a portfolio which encompasses the commercial, the industrial, as well as the retail space. And if we have a look at some of its largest tenants, it's underpinned by uh, companies like Woolworths and West Farmers, which have about 5.3% uh, of the portfolio each mile, which has about a 3.1% stake, as well as premium investments through its just group about 2.5 percent so it is uh, it is stable earnings in terms of this business and the fact we've seen uh, an increase in its uh, full year forecast is a positive for this particular stock so this stock should do well too. Yeah, this is the thing in, in this reporting season Julia has had financial assistance from the NSW government for Waratah trains take that away would this look so rosy and this is actually my favorite earnings result to come out this morning and that's because we have seen a pretty bad time for downer EDI and we know that the Reliance Rail contracts have been a problem for this business but it does look lo like those days are behind it. What we have seen is a massive turnover in terms of management and the market has been looking for this management to prove itself. The first half numbers we saw downer EDI come out and exceed expectations. We've seen it again in terms of the full year results so I think a bit more confidence returning to downer EDI shares today. We we have a look at management's guidance in terms of full year profit. It was for a net, pat, uh, net profit after tax of $180 million. They've actually come in at $195 million today. So altogether, I guess the market has been used to the volatility that we've seen in uh, down at EDI's earnings because of some of the glitches in its contracts. There's some signs there that earnings are stabilizing, that new management is doing a good job there. And if we have a look at a key driver of the growth that we are seeing in earnings, uh, it is coming from that mining division and of course last week we heard from Rio Tinto no changes to capital expenditure there so it does look like a lot more confidence coming into down at EDI stock and the stock just popping this morning uh, on the back of those results. So uh, mm. every reason to smile. Julia some thoughts on that one? I mean this is the dividend uh, story here. A very impressive dividend result here. The result coming uh, above expectations but it's really the dividend that shines out of the announcement today. The interim dividend was 12 cents. There was expectations that their full year dividend would be 12 cents. We've actually seen the four-year dividend coming in at a massive 23 cents. So I think shareholders will be quite happy with that. There have been calls for the mining companies to increase their dividend and return some of that profit back to shareholders and it does look like Newcrest has managed to do that today. So I think shareholders will be happy with that dividend and the result coming in above expectations.